Over the last 700 years, we built up a huge physical economy that allows us to be transported, have great buildings, food, electricity. And unfortunately, almost every one of those processes emits greenhouse gases. We really need to think about transformation. If we continue the same pathway, we are not going to be able to continue living in this planet. The impacts of climate change, forest fires, droughts, sea level rise, we're starting to see that impact our communities. As humans, we can only live and exist in a very narrow temperature band. The effects that are coming from climate change, it's only going to get worse. We need a paradigm shift. Our energy system, the food system, the mobility system, the built environment, consumer goods. Not only reducing emissions, but also removing carbon from the atmosphere. It is wise to start thinking about also adaptation. To not forget about countries that may be more affected by climate change. There are a lot of technologies that are going to be needed if we are going to address climate change at scale. There will be surprising ideas that come from places we wouldn't expect. greatest opportunity for innovation. Everything has been made through a process that has helped to exacerbate climate change. The problem we face is that with some of these materials, most notably concrete and steel, releasing significant amounts of carbon dioxide is central to their creation. The world is building basically a New York City every month, and that all requires huge amounts of cement and steel. We need to think about ways that we can make cement because we know we need to continue to build things in a way that is going to be as low carbon as possible. When you go to those industries and say, okay, here's something new, it takes a lot of incentives before you can have a chance of changing that. The private industry is usually seen as a big villain in this process of emitting uh, you know, greenhouse gases, but they can have a very important role in solving the problem. After water, concrete is the most consumed substance on Earth. Raw materials are available in most places on Earth. It's cheap, and it can take any form that you want it to take. The Pantheon in Rome was built using concrete from rock from volcanoes and is still standing today. The 
It's one of the most durable materials on Earth. And it's also essential to the way our society is built. One of the ways we describe concrete is ubiquitous to the point of anonymity, which is to say that it's so everywhere that you don't even see it anymore. Because like all of these blocks, and these bricks are put together with mortar. That house over there, that's a facade built on concrete. All of the foundations of all of those houses are built on concrete. All of the pipes that bring the water to these houses are concrete. All of the, the curb stones there, concrete. This is going to be a very boring documentary of me driving around France going, uh, concrete, <laughs> concrete. <laughs> the dirty secret of the industry is that it's highly polluting in terms of CO2 emissions. For every tonne of cement we produce, there's almost a tonne of CO2 that's emitted to the atmosphere. For many years, cement industry justified its relatively uh, limited performance on CO2 by the fact that you could not manufacture cement without producing CO2. So simply, everyone needs to accept that and, and leave us alone. The, the, the reductions must come elsewhere. I came to it late in my career without knowing what the rules were. So I, I took a fresh look at it and decided that there was much more that could be done here. And that's why I set up Equisim. Okay, we mix for how long there? For now we'll just mix for one minute at low yeah. speed. Yeah. Ecosem supplies technologies and low carbon products to the concrete and cement and construction industry in order to minimize our carbon footprint uh, as, a, as a global construction industry. The challenge for us is using the minimum amount of pollution materials possible whilst maintaining the properties, flow, durability, strength, ease of use. And that's what we've achieved with this new technology. Excellent, I couldn't get better than that. There's various different ingredients that make up concrete. So there's rocks and we're gonna glue those rocks together with a combination of cement and water. And clinker is the most polluting part of the cement. Clinker is burnt limestone and shale about one third of carbon emissions comes from the energy it takes to heat the limestone. And two thirds is actually the carbon that's contained in the limestone that's released during the burning process. So even if we manage to solve the energy use that it needs to, to cook the limestone, we still have two thirds that we can't avoid because it's given off during the process. So our focus at Ecosem has always been to minimize the clinker content of cement and therefore the clinker content of concrete. We use the same materials as used in traditional cement, but we use them very, very differently. We only take the polluting elements as a smaller component as possible. We have now down to 20% of the mix, instead of being 80 or 90% of the cement. The important breakthrough that our technology represents is that it opens up the scope for using a much wider range of materials in the manufacture of cement. Slag is what you get left over when you're making iron. It's a waste product. And so we buy it off the steel industry and we use it to reduce the carbon emissions from the cement industry. This is the basis of all of our current technologies, but this is a finite resource. So we already have to think about what's the next product to create a concrete that performs the same way as it does today. The Grand Paris project, which is the extension of the metro system around Paris, is one of the largest infrastructural projects in the world. Le réseau du Grand Paris Express est un réseau gigantesque, 200 km de voies, c'est l'équivalent du métro parisien actuel. 
dans toute notre phase de construction, le béton, dont on sait qu'aujourd'hui, c'est un sujet majeur pour les émissions carbone, soit aussi peu émissif que possible. On top of being a, a very environmental project, the XM technology enabled uh, the concrete here to actually increase its design life, which expands over the 50 years that is required and, and go up to 78 years, which is a big part of sustainable construction. And the impact on this specific site, we estimate the concrete to have a CO2 reduction of about 40 to 50 percent, thanks to the use of XM technology. Over the period of existence of the company, We've reduced CO2 emissions in Europe by about 14 million tons of CO2 already. Now we plan to do a lot more than that, but it's, it, it's a nice number to keep in mind because it shows that even a small startup company can make a significant contribution to bringing down CO2 emissions. So this is one of the first uses on this site of the Zero Clinker Cement EcoSem Ultra. So as you can see, that's pretty much the strength. It works, let's go. Initially, the cement industry didn't appeal to me as it's not the first industry you think about when you, when you talk about fun. But the more I learn about the industry and the more I understand the importance of reducing the environmental impact of the industry, the more and more exciting it becomes. Hey, Dan. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> no worries. Here, you can take her now. There Come she on. is. Oh, oh baby <laughs> Mia. Oh. <gasps> when I was in school, maybe 10 or 11 years old, uh, they asked me what my dad did, and I said he makes bricks. Um, and uh, <laughs> that was not entirely false. <laughs> yeah. okay. I joined the business in 2006, and initially I worked in our Ecosem Ireland business. My younger brother Gav joined the business in 2018, and my mum works in the business as well. So uh, if you ever come to my house, you'll see us all talking about, uh, about cement, among other things. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of the boring work, chap. Well, this is more or less what happens when we have family. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. When my father started Ecosem in the year 2000, he understood that the world was going to need to reduce its carbon emissions, despite the fact that he was about 20 years ahead of his time. It's only in very recent years that the construction industry has started to really focus on the challenge that climate change presents. Demand for concrete and cement is set to, to grow in the future. It's one thing in the developed world to say, oh, maybe we might scale back a little bit and look for other things. But in the emerging world, we can't turn around to those people and say, we've equipped ourselves with nice infrastructure. Now you must do without it because of CO2. The only real choice is to decarbonize. And if we need to get to zero emissions by 2050, this technology has to be used globally. The challenge is now to change the standards within the industry no consumer behavior will achieve that. That can only be changed by a combination of technology and regulator and government action, political action, and that is absolutely essential. David against Goliath, we're up against one of the biggest industries in the world, some of the biggest companies in the world. But innovation gives me hope. New practices, new ways of working, new ways of doing things all give me hope. If a small company like ours can have the impact that we can have, I'm sure others can do the same. Imagine a world where there is unlimited, clean, very cheap energy. And the world will look extremely different from the world we have today. Climate change is happening right now. As long as we're not at net zero greenhouse gas emissions, the problem will keep getting worse. It's the biggest challenge that mankind has ever taken on. Innovation is the primary answer. Isn't so cool? 
<laughs> We're David against Goliath. We're up against one of the biggest industries in the world. Fusion is the type of energy that powers the stars. Wind is always down. Why would we not use it? Our goal is to remove a trillion tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. We're really aiming for a solution at the scale of the problem. Because if we don't, what's the alternative? The worst is not inevitable. There are so many good people. There are so many good projects. This is a collective action. Everybody has to contribute. There will be surprising ideas that come from places we wouldn't expect. If you have enough smart people working on a problem, you can make anything happen uh, within the laws of physics, of course.